Testing. Well, hello, everybody. <laughs> Welcome to graduation. My name is Mark, and I'm one of the leaders here at Youth of the Mission Denver. And I just want to give a warm welcome to our guests. If you're a guest, just raise your hand and we'll clap for you. We also want to say a warm welcome to our Facebook Live guests as well. We can clap and applaud for them too. If you would like to share this event with your friends, you can feel free to pop on your phone and share that and uh, get them watching with us. So yeah, just for those of you who may not know, Youth of the Mission is one of the larger missions movements on the planet today, and YOM Denver is a, uh, a part of that family. And these students have come here to study in our worship, intercession, spiritual warfare, and evangelism school. And our biblical school of justice. Yeah! Very excited, and we're so proud to graduate you tonight. I'd like to open us in prayer, and then I'm going to hand it over to Porter for a time of worship. Can you guys bow your heads with me? Jesus, we just give you all honor and glory tonight. We're so grateful that you've given us a chance to serve you, that you've drawn us in to know your heart, to know you through the word, to know what you think about the world around us. And as we graduate these students tonight, we want to put you in first place and say thank you. Thank you for rescuing each of us from where we were and for sending each of us onto the things that you're sending us into. So I just want to glorify you and honor you today and invite you to come and be a part of this celebration as we celebrate what these students have done and learned. In Jesus' name, amen. amen. It's too emotional now. Oh, <laughs> <laughs> well, yeah, let's just worship together one last time as a big group here.
social justice uh, because we felt like the, the biblical aspect describes our heart more than um, social justice and just a, a, a popular movement um, day by day, but more of a, a biblical aspect that um, is centered around God's word and leading us towards uh, justice. 
Um, so that's why we changed the name uh, this quarter, right before the quarter started. Um, and yeah, it's just been a, a great um, journey, three months with these, with these seven girls who have done the school. Um, I think they were really brave. Uh, I told them today that they were very brave to even participate and do this school because it puts a lot of responsibility in their hands and it, it kind of places the, the, yeah, the responsibility and to do something um, according to what the word says and what we've learned. So with great responsibility, um, with great knowledge comes great responsibility. And I think that these seven girls have really uh, taken some things from this school that they can go out and, and, and really uh, make an impact for the kingdom. And so I'm, I'm proud of them for that. Um, another thing is uh, something that was very special about this class was that they always carried so much joy and even with like the roller coaster uh, kind of emotionally, spiritually with the school, they always carried um, great joy and they, they always had like a learner's, learner's mentality. They always wanted to learn and ask questions um, through the difficult times and it was just really great to see. This, the school isn't um, one of the easiest schools to do. We, we cover topics that um, most people would be a little scared of to learn about or dive deep and uh, we just really seek the Lord in every single topic, um, showing us where he is and highlighting the light in the darkness. And so, yeah, it's just been amazing and these girls have taken it head on and I'm really excited for what they're doing next. I always say that this school is a, a, is a do something school. So really, because they have the responsibility, I, I would like for uh, to see students get out and do missions. It's, it prepares students for long-term missions because there are complexities that they're gonna, that you're gonna run into when you're in missions. And this school um, helps kind of signal some of those complexities so that you're prepared for them. Um, I'd like to thank my staff. Uh, me and my wife have been doing this school together since 2012, and uh, she makes it really exciting for me. Um, I also had um, another assistant, Colin. Uh, he was always kind of working behind the scenes. He's the one who is in class the most um, out, of the, out of the staff. He's the one that um, has really taken a lot of initiative in um, just learning and growing in, in his leadership. And then I had two small group leaders who were one-on-ones um, -on for these girls and small group leaders. So um, I couldn't have done it without my staff. Um, I, I have two students who I'd like to come up and share a little bit of what they've learned and have experienced during this time. So first, Ani. Hello everyone. Um, I'm Ani, I'm from Germany. <laughs> so I came to do this school um, because I think I always had a big heart for justice. And then also I had a lot of questions um, <laughs> I had a lot of questions about justice, like um, why are there so many people suffering and why God, does God not intervene? Those were like the questions I had to come to in the school. And I really got answers at the school, so it was really good to do it. Um, during the school we talked a lot about the injustice and what's happening in the world. And it was really, really challenging to hear the stories. And, I actually was really shocked that I didn't knew a lot of those things and that I was living my life in ignorance before, that there was so much going on that I just didn't know. Um, and the great thing for me during this school was that when I did not understand why those things are happening, I went to God in my quiet time and I was asking him those questions. I was angry at him 
why he does not do anything. And it was so cool for me to always see how God like just brought me back into his arms and um, yeah, just showed me his goodness and how good he is and how much love he has. Um, and I want to tell you a quote from C.S. Lewis that I really liked. Um, and it says, suffering is the price that had to be paid for love and freedom to exist at all. Um, so God loves us so much, but we still have to go through suffering right now, but one day he will make everything right and the suffering is actually giving us the opportunity to experience his love and his freedom. Um, and then for me, like, it just gets a lot when you hear all those topics we went through. Um, so I was at the point where I was just, okay, what can I do? I can do nothing. Even if I would do my best, it would not be enough to help all those people. So I felt really helpless and just overwhelmed. Um, but God just showed me that Jesus took it all and that I don't have to carry it. Carry it. And um, that um, God just wants me to do what he tells me and that he wants me, he wants to use me to bring justice into this world and he wants me to use, um, just to help the one in front of me and just to do what I can do and that's enough. And that was really good to hear from him. <laughs> um, and that's one thing we can all do. And I actually got reminded of a poem I wrote during BTS, so I want to end with that. Um, Maybe you know the song, um, If We Are The Body, from Casting Grounds. Uh -huh. I'm going to start with that. Um, but if we are the body, why aren't his arms reaching? Why aren't his hands healing? Why aren't his words teaching? And if we are the body, why aren't his feet going? Why is his love not showing them there is a way? I believe there is a way. We may not see today. All this pain and all this sorrow. Sometimes I wish there would be no tomorrow. But God has chosen you and me to be part of his great love story. Yes, you've heard right. Love is what I said. Love is when Jesus hung at the cross and fled. He did it for us so that we can be free and live with him in eternity. But before that, he gave us a mission so that we can be part of his big vision. That one day every knee will bow, every tongue confess his glory and his righteousness. That one day justice will reign and there won't be and there won't be any more pain. I want to see that too. What about you? <laughs>
And her dad was just kind of observing and smiling and looking at her and adoring her and waiting. And finally, she looked up and she said, Dad, can I have your help? <laughs> and her dad walked over to her and he took a broom and she held the dustpan and he swept the clippings into the dustpan and she was just like in awe of partnering with him and went and dumped the clippings into the trash can. And so I share that experience with you because that is what pursuing justice is to me. It's about partnership with the Lord. And that's one of the biggest things I think I'm walking away from the school with is just understanding that God is such a relationship-oriented God. He doesn't want us to do things for him. He wants us to do things with him. Sorry. <laughs> yeah. So he would prefer us to be with him and do things with him. <laughs> It's more effective that way, right? Because God could easily do things all on his own. Like that dad could have easily swept up the clippings on his own, but he loves us so much that he wants us to make, he wants to make us a part of that. Um, a part of pursuing justice and cleaning up the world together. So, yeah, and lastly, I would just like to thank the staff because they poured so much into us and they forced us to process over and over and over again, even when we had nothing to say. <laughs> um, so thank you guys, you made that possible, and thank you to the Wyland Denver community, because you guys rock. That's all. <laughs>
Hey, I'm Hannah. Um, I am from Nashville, Tennessee, and I will be going with the DTS to uh, Africa. And then I will also be doing an internship there afterwards. Hey. And Anika Schuler. these ladies over these past few months and for just their willingness to come and answer the call and to uh, learn from you during these past few months. Father, I just bless them with grace and processing over these next few months and I pray that you would just give them wisdom as they continue to uh, step forward into your heart and into uh, just doing justice with you every day um, with whatever you place in their hands. So I just bless these ladies in Jesus' name. Amen. Amen. And uh, I'd like to welcome up Stephen Clark, who directed the Wise School. Good evening. How are all of you? So good. Great. So like Colin said, uh, my name is Stephen Clark, and I had the great privilege of directing the WISE School this summer. Um, WISE School stands for Worship, Intercession, Spiritual Warfare, and Evangelism. It's a mouthful. Um, but, uh, you know, this is, just to share a little bit with you guys what the school is like, this is a very unique school um, at YWAM Denver. Uh, I, I think the main thing being... Um, there are two mandatory evangelism days each week. Uh, there's mandatory evangelism times other than just our communities. Um, and uh, it's a school that really stretches one's faith and um, identity, actually. Uh, so I want to share a little bit about that. Um, the Y School really is an interesting journey. Uh, I don't think any of these students had really an idea what they were getting themselves into before they got here. Um, and the uh, first couple days, it's a, it's a wake-up call. Um, but uh, like I said, the evangelism and the intercession uh, really can wear on you, and it takes a lot of endurance, personally, to be able to continue, especially, you know, imagine being, being able to go out there onto the streets. You know, we do street evangelism. A couple times we did door-to-door -door evangelism in the neighborhood, and, um, you know, possible dealing with rejection and... Um, people that, that are angry at God or, or people that, um, you know, really are struggling personally with different things. You, 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 you meet many different kinds of people um, in ministry and, you know, the Lord really starts to give us a heart for those people. Uh, and, and that is one of the things um, that can, can wear on you. But at the same time, we, we're really uh, privileged to work with the Lord and see so much fruit in ministry. So we're so thankful for things like that. Um, to speak to the students especially, uh, the spiritual warfare side of the school, I would say you learn it inside of a topic, but it's much, even more than the other three, I think it's more of a lifestyle of taking each step, each um, issue that happens, each, each thing that comes up in your life, taking that uh, with the heart of faith and trusting, knowing your identity, knowing your authority, is something we learn in the Y School for sure, and being able to walk through... Uh, life with um, knowing that, that there's nothing too great for Jesus, and uh, it's, it's beautiful to walk through that, that lifestyle of spiritual warfare, and um, uh, you guys will even realize in the next week or two how much different it is um, they, leading this, but it's a training opportunity to, to, allow, to allow the Lord to take us through um, spiritual warfare, so uh, I've admired you guys so much. Um, there, even just this week reflecting on the school, I can't even think of one ounce of complaining or um, speaking negatively of each other. You guys you didn't share it around me at least, so that was probably good. Um, but, uh, uh, and the, the positive attitudes through everything, continuing 
to have a, a team atmosphere and how we're going out and doing ministry, continuing to have that unity that's really important um, in loving each other, to, to see um, some fruit in ministry and in evangelism and how we're trying to represent Jesus well um, to others. So, you know, we've seen things like this. Uh, it takes so much endurance to go out there and preach the gospel time after time after time, to pray for miracles and maybe not see it happen, maybe see it happen sometimes, and to continue to have faith, to continue to, to trust the Lord. It takes a lot out of you. Um, and these students, I know one of the greatest things, and, and we really work through intimacy with Christ in the school, and I know um, all five of our students really went back to Jesus and went back to the Holy Spirit and were able to be refilled um, in the love of God to be able to do everything in love, right? Um, uh, one word that could probably define this school would be opinionated. <laughs> um, but uh, we all know that opinionated people are just leaders, right? Um, so, and I know that, <laughs> I know that um, the word pioneer really defines uh, and is a word that unifies uh, our, our school and brings individuals into, into a family. And, uh, you know, when you get out there, pioneering different ministries or even pioneering in different spheres of society and leading things and creating things from nothing, uh, you really got to know what you believe in your mind. You really have to know what you believe in your hearts. And uh, I know that every single one of our students carries that conviction in life. And that's something um, that really is important for a leader and a pioneer. So I admire that in all of you guys. Um, to close up, this school really is something that challenges your identity. Um, if you think about it, and uh, if, if, you know, if the Lord comes to you and says, who do you consider yourself to be? And you might say, well, I'm this, I'm that, and this kind of things. And he says, well, I want you to put all that aside and allow me to tell you who you are and who you, consider, who you should consider yourself to be. I'm not an evangelist. And the Lord's like, you need to set that aside and allow me to define who you are and who, who you aren't. And uh, all of these students... Um, accepted that with humility and grace, and it's such a fun opportunity to walk through that uh, with people who can, can that's, that's, that's being able to die to self and saying, Lord, you can define who I am, and you can say that I have more authority than I, than I think I do. I have more leadership in my future than I thought I did, um, and really accepting those things, and that's change, that's growth, that's, that's what we want, uh, becoming disciples of Christ, right? So, um, yeah, I, I just want to say thank you so much to you guys for your endurance, for your faith, and, uh, and, and it's so many things that we learn, especially um, in intercession, evangelism, spiritual warfare, and worship, uh, it starts now, doesn't it? Um, so thank you guys for all of your perseverance uh, in, in every single thing that we did, and, um, and doing it with a positive attitude and really worshiping the Lord as a lifestyle. Um, so I'm really grateful. For every single one of you guys. And we also have a student who wasn't able to be here for graduation with us. Uh, Chad, he's on his way. He had um, family reasons to be able to, to take off early. So um, he's probably not going to see it on Facebook. But uh, <laughs> um, maybe if you're out there somewhere, Chad, safe, safe driving. Um, yeah. But, uh, yeah, so thank you so much to you guys. It's been such a joy to, to walk this journey together. Um, and so to share a little bit more about the school, uh, I'd like to bring up Nate um, to share a testimony from his Nate. Thank you very much. <laughs> yeah, my leader called me, God wanted me to speak here, and so I'm here, and I think that already shows a lot about how wise school is. <laughs> Most of our speakers, when they first came in, they asked us the question, why did you decide to do high school? And I think it was interesting to see that we all pretty much had the same answer, Jesus. None of us had the high school really by themselves on their radar. We all had different way God actually introduced us to this school and brought us into it. In my case, it started with me telling God that I don't like evangelism. <laughs> and that I don't think that I'm gifted in it and that it has anything to do with my future calling or my future way. <laughs> so, God told me through a prophetic word 
that he sees that different, <laughs> as he sometimes does things see different than I do. <laughs> and he actually introduced me to Y School, which evangelism, as you guys all know, is a huge part of it. And I finally applied for this school. And I was about to learn to know kind of a missing piece of my faith. I mean, I knew about it, but something I did not really realize that it's part of a Christian life yet. Maybe you ask yourself, why is, why these four things? Why worship, intercession, spiritual warfare, and evangelism? Throughout the school, I realized like that these four things, actually, all of them kind of pointing towards the same direction or are working or are tools for the same goal. They are tools for to fulfill the Great Commission, to preach the gospel to every nation, to go out, share what you believe, and yeah, be open to your faith, be uh, with your faith, be outward oriented. Like worship, I learned when we worship, the presence of God shows up. He comes and we put ourselves in a position of praise, of adoring Him, in a position our hearts need to be if we want to share about Him. Intercession is way more than just praying. Actually, we looked into the history of intercession and found out that every great revival that happened, intercession was going before it, and intercession is a huge part of it. So intercession is not just praying and like something we have to do as Christians regularly, it actually makes a difference. And I realize how important it is that you have prayers in the background if you want to fulfill the Great Commission and how important it is to go into prayer and, yeah, having the anointing of the Holy Spirit of you. Spiritual warfare goes into that. The Bible says we are not fighting against flesh and blood, but against the um, principalities in the heavenly room. And I mean, I grew up Christian. I heard about the spiritual room, but I did not really see it in my life. And during high school learning, how actually that can affect myself and can affect us in trying to reach the goal to fulfill the Great Commission and that we actually fighting against these principalities has to fight in the spirit of warfare was a great opening for me. So we see how these three things all work together towards the same goal. And they're actually all supporting the fourth one, which is my favorite one, evangelism. <laughs> and, I mean, I think that's pretty much the most obvious one. If we don't tell them about Jesus, how should they know? And so it was interesting to me to see how all these four things pointed towards the same thing. And God was kind of revealing to me during the school that when we look at the life of Jesus, the main things he did was ministry. When we look in the book of Acts, the thing that Apostle did, the followers, the early Christian, it was always about ministry, about sharing. And God revealed to me that this is actually a very important part of being a Christian. And when I came to YWAM, I came into a mission organization, not with the goal to spread the gospel, but with the goal to grow in my own faith, to grow in my relationship with the Lord, to go deeper with Him, which are all very good motives, but I kind of forgot this missing piece about it's actually also about opening yourself and sharing what you know and what you believe and going out and I think that was really about when I would have to summarize Y School about what Y School is you learn about this important part of the every Christian life and you get the tools how to do it yeah this school was a great thing and I say I could say with all my fellow students together that we had great stuff and I want to thank Thanks them for being in the school, for helping us, for walking with us through it. Yeah, I think I can speak for all of my fellow students. We had a great time. Thank you. Thank you very much, Nate. Um, all right, well, it's time to, to graduate, you guys. Uh, I would like to invite up uh, Beck. She was Rebecca Ann Morris. Uh, yeah, this school would not have um, been anything close to good without Beck as, as one of our leaders. Um, so thank you so much for your service. And uh, again, leaving with... Uh, <laughs> <laughs> and leading with um, the heart of a positive attitude as one of the greatest things you carry. So I'd like to have our staff and um, Jason and Glenn Jill, you guys take your places over inside.
these two, these two are very, very good small group leaders. Um, the majority of the personal discipleship happens with our small group leaders in our school. So thank you guys so much for investing in, in each of these disciples. Um, so you guys can come on up and, and take a line right here, and we will graduate you. Anya Barchi. <laughs> Thank you for your faithfulness. 